Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going through my top tips to help boost your personal statement. These tips will be specific for people wanting to do medicine or dentistry, but if you just want some general tips on the personal statement, stick around as well. So before I get into the rest of the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel out. Okay, so the first thing you should consider when you're trying to write your personal statement is why exactly do you want to do the course that you're applying for? So why do you want to do dentistry or medicine? For some people they had a specific experience or story in their life that made them gravitate towards these professions. For other people they just have a passion in healthcare or they want to help people. And and there's just a million different reasons why people want to do dentistry and medicine. But you need to find out the unique or specific reason why you are interested in these professions. Now, it's a good base and a good starting point for your personal statement and should usually come near the beginning. Bear in mind that a lot of the time people find the personal statement quite daunting because they don't know how to start it. So this is just a really good starting point and it helps you visualize how the rest of the personal statement is going to go. So once you've established why you want to do your course, you now need to go through the different things that have led you towards it. An important thing to note though is to make sure you don't put some sort of like little sob story that no one's going to believe in your personal statement. Even though some people do have some really tragic things that they want to talk about that inspired them to do the career. You shouldn't be spending too many characters in this in your personal statement because there's other things you need to talk about. So it's important to mention why you want to do the career but again don't waste too many characters on it. Bear in mind that the entire personal statement is 4,000 characters in total so you need to split all your information within those characters. My next top tip is to mention any new things that you've gone into that show your interest in dentistry or medicine. So you can talk about different books that you've read, you can talk about different MOOCs that you've done, these are some online courses that are really really good to do. On top of this you can talk about any lectures that you've attended or anything interesting to do with dentistry or medicine as a whole. Usually I'd also say mention your work experience here but I know a lot of people this year found it hard to get work experience because of the whole corona situation so try and find some alternative to talk about and show your passion for dentistry as I've said before looking at MOOCs are a really good option because most of them are free and they show your interest in the course reading books is also another really good one and even engaging with different dentists online through webinars on zoom or talking on insta stories stuff like that shows your interest in the profession and gives you something to talk about in your personal statement even if you work somewhere that has anything related to healthcare you can talk about that as well it just shows your dedication to the subject and it shows that you have an interest in dentistry or medicine. So if you don't have work experience, don't stress out too much. It's okay. Most people don't this year. Just make sure you do other things to replace this. Don't just be complacent and think, oh, no one's going to have work experience. So I'm not going to do anything extra. That's not a good idea. You need to stand out because there's thousands of people applying. So make sure that you do those extra things that I've mentioned to help boost your credentials. My next tip is to mention any skills that you have that are related to the subject. So you can talk about different things like leadership, communication, teamwork, critical thinking. There's a thousand different skills you can talk about. A nice little structure that I follow is mentioning a skill that I have, giving an example of when I've done it in my own life and then saying how it relates to dentistry. So for example, I can say I have good leadership skills and that I've developed them because I was house captain at school and this translates well to dentistry because as an important member of the team, you need to have good communication and leadership skills in order to provide the correct service for a patient. That's just a really easy off the top of my head sort of example, but there's a million different ways you can do it for each different skill. But just make sure that you don't just aimlessly throw skills in there that you can't relate to anything. And if you can relate them to something that you've done, it's really good because it shows that you've actually tried to improve the skill in your own time. So leading on from that, it's really important to make sure you mention any extracurricular activities you've done. These are a really easy way to link yourself to skills. For example, you can say you played for a football team and because of that you have good teamwork skills. On top of that, if you're not a very sporty person, it doesn't matter. You can talk about a million different things that you've done extracurricularly. So just make sure that you mention them to show that you're not just some random nerd applying for these courses. And if you are, it's completely fine. Just make sure you have some interesting extracurricular things to talk about. And if you don't have anything extracurricular to talk about, then you have to think about something to do in the next few months that fills that spot in. An easy way to do this is to find out a hobby that you like or just a talent that you might have and use that to do an extracurricular activity. So if you're very good at art, for example, make sure that you mention that in your personal statement. If you're good at certain things, just make sure that you just throw them in there to show you're more of a complete candidate. Again, just try and find something, anything, even if it's so small, that just shows you're quite interested. One thing I recommend is that people join their medical dental society that they have set up at their sixth forms. And if you don't have one, even better, you can set up a society and talk about that in your personal statement. So that's one little extra thing you can do as an extracurricular activity. And again, once you've stated these activities, make sure that you can relate them to something like a skill that relates back to dentistry or medicine. It's just important to remember that anything that you mention should be able to link back to the course you're doing. Leading on from this idea of skills and extracurricular stuff, if you mention a skill or you mention a specific example that shows a skill, make sure you have some backups for it. Now you might be a bit confused by this, but I'll go into a bit further. So let's say you mention that you have leadership skills and you talk about being house captain, as I mentioned before. In your interview, they might ask you to give an example of leadership skills that you have not mentioned in your personal statement. You may not think this comes up a lot, but this was something I was asked at one of my interviews. I was asked to give an example of where I showed teamwork skills that I have not shown in my personal statement. So it's just good to have some extra things to talk about that you don't necessarily have to write in your personal statement. Again, this might not be super easy and you don't have to do it for every skill, but just make sure you have some extra things that you can talk about that you haven't written down. And leading on from this, if you can't find something, do not lie. Lying is one of the worst things you can do in your personal statement because if you get caught out, you're instantly screwed in your interview. And on top of that, it's, you know, morally wrong, but 
you know, some people don't care about that, but in general, it's just bad for you in the long run. Make sure that if you mention anything, it's something that you've actually done and something that you're actually interested in because a keen interviewer might pick your brains about a specific part of your personal statement. And if you're not sure about it, then you're gonna be screwed. On top of this, make sure that you don't write anything that you don't really understand. So a lot of people mention that they've read some book and now they completely understand root canal treatment. If you do this in your interview, they're most likely gonna ask you about this and pick your brains to see if you actually know what you're talking about. So if you've read something interesting, it's fine, mention it, but don't write about it in a way that makes you seem like you know everything about the topic. My next after this is to make sure that you have a good flow to your personal statement. One easy way to do this is to make sure you don't just list random things. Plan out in your head what topics you want to mention in each paragraph of your personal statement. I'll leave my example personal statement below so you guys can look at it. This is the personal statement I used a few years ago and I got all my interview offers. So there can be some good things that you can pick out from it. Obviously don't just copy my personal statement because you know even if you want to you'll get caught out and to be honest UCAS also has a plagiarism checker so they'll know if you've copied someone else's so don't do it. And my final tip is to make sure that you have a decent ending paragraph. So in the last paragraph you just want to round off all the information that you've mentioned. Just say that, for example, based on what I've said, I feel that I'd be a keen and good candidate for dentistry, for example. Again, look at my personal statement for some pointers if you're still confused. If you guys want me to go through your personal statements and try and analyze them and give you some feedback, then you can DM me on Instagram and I'll look through them. I'm also gonna be offering a service where I do some one-to-one -one consulting for personal statements. Within that, I'll be providing more support to help you do a better personal statement. But of course, if you're not interested in that, just DM me anyway and I'll give you some easy free advice. So I hope that was helpful for you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure that you like, comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all my videos. I know a lot of you are sitting in the UK right now, so I'm wishing you the best of luck. Look at all my other previous videos if you want some more advice. I have them linked up here somewhere. And if you want to, feel free to check out my Instagram and TikTok as well. They've also got some interesting content there that you might want to check out. So thank you for watching.